so many of my friends asking me how they can do night photography or astrophotography. And I love taking astrophotography. I love seeing stars at night. They just amaze me. So in this video, I'm going to teach you as well how to do astrophotography so you can get started. Obviously, you're going to need a camera. My weapon of choice is Nikon Z50 from Nikon Australia and you will need a sturdy and reliable tripod. So I'm using this Bandra tripod carbon fiber, but there's so many options out there depending on how much weight you want the tripod to be able to handle and also um, how much you're willing to spend. And I always bring a torch with me. This is my head torch for two reasons. When you do astrophotography, that's gonna be really dark. So you want to be able to see where you're going. You want to be able to see what's in your back when you're changing the lens, if you do change the lens and do the settings with a camera. And the second reason being, you might need this to get more creative and do light paintings if you want. All right, so let's go through where is the best location and what is the best and ideal environment to shoot astrophotography. Well, the further you are from the light pollution areas, the better. Because all this light pollution, especially from the cities, that's gonna wash out all the stars. That is why when you're up in a mountain, just like where I am right now, you get to see more stars compared to when you're in the city area. And when you go somewhere nice, quiet, and dark, instead of just shooting the night sky with nothing in the foreground, consider to go somewhere with a nice foreground. That can be somewhere with a nice rock formation, it can be a building that is dark, it can be anything that's interesting to you. When you're doing astrophotography, that involves a certain amount of plannings and some things that you need to check to make sure the night's gonna be cloudless, because otherwise the cloud's gonna cover all the stars and you won't be able to see anything. And that needs to be either moonless, like totally no moon, or the moon just like just rising or about to set. Because if you got the moon up in the sky, the moon's gonna wash away the brightness of the stars. And here's the pro tips. Instead of just shooting whatever that's on the sky at that time, use an app or try to find a way to know where the Milky Way's position is going to be. For me personally, I use an app that's called Stellarium. It's a paid app, but it's going to be worth it, trust me. That app's telling me where the Milky Way is going to be at certain hours at your locations or at the location that you're going to. So make sure you check the forecast before you head off so you know what you can expect. Okay, now it's about the how. The how and the camera settings can be the most daunting part in the astrophotography shooting process. The first thing that you need to know, your camera, whether you use the DSLR mirrorless camera or use your mobile phone, that needs to be in manual mode. When I say manual mode, it means that you need to be able to adjust the ISO of the camera, the shutter speed, and the aperture. Also, one more thing as well, that needs to be in manual focus because the environment's gonna be too dark for the camera to pick up something and lock the focus in. And here's the dilemma of people shooting astrophotography. A lot of questions that I had is whether I actually focus on the stars or I focus on the subject in the foreground. The answer is it depends. It can be both, but it really depends. If I have something in the foreground that is within a close proximity with me, I'll try to focus on that foreground and I use my torch to assist me in finding the focus. But if my subject at the foreground is a bit further away, then I will focus on the stars instead. So how do you focus to the stars up in the sky? Well, most cameras these days got this LCD screen at the back. So what you can do with a live view on, so you're looking at the stars through this LCD screen, find the brightest star you can find, zoom in slowly to that one brightest star, and then adjust this focus ring manually until you get that best focus. And one other thing as well before you take the shot is make sure you use the remote trigger or timer to take the shot because 
with a little press of this button right here, it can also introduce a little bit of camera shake and your image might not turn up as sharp as it can be. So now if you've got a focus locked in, you've set up the remote trigger or the timer on your camera, what I'll recommend after all this effort, set your camera to shoot in RAW format. Yes, RAW format's gonna have a bigger file, but RAW photos got a lot more information compared to just JPEG photos. Astrophotography might require some extensive editing. You might wanna brighten up and darken up some parts of the photos. Plus, in the future, about one to five years from now, you might wanna revisit your old photos back and you wanna do a bit of editing because you have acquired some certain level of editing skills by the time. That's why raw file photos is what I will recommend. All right, so now you've locked in the focus, you've set up your timer or the remote trigger of your camera, you're shooting in raw, the settings. Use the largest aperture that your lens can do. Some lenses can go up to f1.4, some lenses like this one goes to 3.5. So you basically want to set the aperture to the largest that the lens can do. For the shutter speed, I normally shoot at 30 seconds, the ISO, it really depends on whether this moon exists on that night, but I normally shoot between ISO 3200 to ISO 6400. So you might want to play around with that and find your sweet spot when you're shooting. Okay, I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoy making it in this beautiful house and garden in the Blue Mountains today. I hope the tutorial has been helpful. I hope the information that I presented just now has been helpful for you as well. If you have any questions, shoot me in the comments down below or you can message me on Instagram and I will respond to you. Consider subscribing, I would really appreciate that. That's it from me for today and I will see you in the next video. Keep making this world a better place. Peace.